Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at what kind of power supply do we actually need for our new PC. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at what power supply do we actually need for our new PC, or for a replacement, all those kinds of things. So do we need to spend possibly a ton of money on a branded, expensive, high wattage power supply, or can we get away with just using a slightly cheaper alternative? And there's a question we get asked quite a lot here at Mike's Unboxing, both on the YouTube channel and also in our Discord chat. So I figured I'll make a video. This is actually gonna be in three parts. So we've got a series of these. So the first one is what power supply do we need? The second power supply section will be where do we buy our power supply and how do we go about doing that? And then the third and final will be how to actually install it. So there's gonna be a complete set of videos for you to get into and know the whole process from start to finish. So if you wanna find out how all that goes, then don't forget to click on the subscribe button. And also while you're down there, click on the like button. It really does help the channel. So first of all, for the start of series one, we're gonna be going through to see what wattage power supply we actually require for our build. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna use a website, which is called Outer Vision. They've got a fantastic tool, which you can go in and you can put in all your individual components of your PC build, and you can find out exactly what you need power-wise. Also, you can also tailor it as well, so if you're into overclocking or tinkering a little bit, or maybe you wanna throw in a ton of RGB, there is a section so you can add all those things and get a really, really good reading of what wattage your power supply needs to be, and also, regarding its efficiency, you can find out how much it's gonna cost you over the period of, for example, a year. So it's a really great site, and really, we should take a look at it right now. So head over to your favorite browser, and we're gonna use Chrome, and all you need to do is type in Outer Vision. And you can, if you want to, you can put a PSU in there as well, if that helps. And you should find this, outervision.com power supply calculator. So click on the link, I'll put some links for this actually in the video description to make life a little bit easier for you, those of you that don't want to type. And this is essentially what it is. So Outer Vision have done loads and loads of testing from various systems. Also, they've done things like uh, configuring mining rigs where power and voltage is really, really important. And they break it down into individual segments. So what we've got is two options. We've got an expert option and we've also got our basic option. So if you really want to get into the real nitty gritty of what you're doing, then you can choose the expert version. Or if you just want a simple, straightforward answer, then you can hit on the basic. So let's try the basic one, first of all, and we'll see what we actually need for our system. So the system that I've got on the desk at the moment is a standard desktop, so we'll choose desktop. And it's only got one CPU, so we'll choose that. And for the CPU, you can actually type in what it is. So let's type in Ryzen 5, and it's actually a 2600, so we should be able to find that pretty easily, if I type it incorrectly anyway. There we go, Ryzen 5 2600. So next is our memory. So we've got two memory sticks in our particular one and they're two eight gig sticks. So that's that. The video card, we can choose either AMD or Nvidia. And we've got one video card and we've actually got a Radeon RX 570. So we'll stick that in. Now obviously there are gonna be some subtle differences but we can take a look at that when we go over to the expert section shortly. Storage wise, we've got one NVMe drive. So we'll choose M.2. NVMe, you can obviously choose whichever you want there. So if it's an older IDE drive or SATA 10K, whatever the case may be, you can choose it there. Now to give me a little bit more flexibility, I'm actually gonna add in an additional drive. So I'm gonna throw in another SATA SSD just in case we decide to upgrade it a little bit. We haven't got any optical drives. Um, monitor wise, you don't really need to do that unless you've got one of those power supplies that has a pass through. So we're gonna ignore that section. And then we're gonna go back to our CPU utilization time. Now, realistically, you can probably leave this exactly as it is. It'll be absolutely fine. You can choose to see what it's actually gonna be like. So whether or not you're doing gaming, 3D apps, etc., all that kind of stuff. But we're gonna say, well, we're gaming for, let's say four hours a day, which I think would be reasonable for most people. So then all we need to do is to click on calculate. And there we go. So that is our load wattage is 260 watts. Our recommended PSU is only 310 watts. So the recommended power supply is, at the moment, it's gonna be a Corsair SF450. Now that's possibly not the best version, but certainly we'll be taking a look at that in part two of this series. But essentially we get what we want, which is our wattage. So that is the recommended PSU wattage for that kind of setup. Now what we're gonna do is go into the expert section and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So again, it's a desktop and we're gonna be using the Ryzen 5 exactly the same as we were before. So 
So Ryzen 5 2600. Now this is where it gets interesting. Can you, you can actually choose your overclock speeds. So let's say for instance we want to overclock this a little bit. So we'll take it from 3.4 to we'll go to about 3.8, which I think is pretty much most people will get 3.8 on all cores on that particular CPU. And we'll jump the voltage up to 1.25, which again isn't out of the ordinary. Uh, CPU utilization, you can leave that as recommended or you can change whichever you want there. I'm going to leave it as 90%. Again, memory, we've got our same two sticks of RAM. So two 8 gig modules and video card again, exactly the same. But this is where we can actually choose our core clocks. So say for instance, you've got it overclocked. Actually, we'll leave it like that for now and we'll show you what it's like after with the overclock. So that's kind of like the default settings for most cards of that kind of era. And we're not gonna put another core card in. So storage wise, we're gonna do the same thing again. So we'll put in our one SATA SSD as well. You can obviously add extra things if you want to. More PCI Express cards. So maybe let's put in a Wi-Fi card as well. Uh, if they've got one listed here. Don't think they actually have. Oh, WLAN card. So we'll choose that as well. Uh, keyboard and mouse. We'll leave that as standard. But you can't really go to town on this. So other devices. We'll add one. We'll add in a USB controller because we have actually got a USB controller. So a fan controller device. And we'll stick in three fans as well. Actually, no, we won't. We'll stick in one LED strip of around about a foot long. Fans, we'll go for three. And they're 120 mils. So again, you can get really specific on this. So water cooling kit as well you want to. You can put all that stuff in. And it does list exact kits as well. So if you've got a specific one, it will go in. And they've actually done testing on a lot of this stuff to get the actual uh, readings completely accurate or as accurate as it possibly can be. So we're going to leave that the same. We'll say again with four hours and now we'll do is click on calculate. So now we've got a bit of a better information here. So 362 watts with our slight overclock and also gives you an idea of your energy costs. So if your kilowatt hours cost is 11p per kilowatt hour, then you can change that accordingly. Obviously you can move the slider. So if your electricity is a little bit more expensive, you can slide that around. So this is where your efficiency comes into it. So if you've got a more efficient power supply, this is obviously going to come into effect and will potentially reduce your costs, uh, possibly considerably. So anyway, this is what we're looking out for. So our 12 volt rail is going to be using 22.9 amps, which actually is pretty low. If we change the graphics card or overclock the graphics card, which if we slide that up a little bit. So this is our graphics card up here. So if we change the core clock, maybe we put it up to 1300 or something. Uh, we'll put the memory up to 1900, thereabouts. And if now we press calculate, now we get a, uh, a slightly different reading. So a little bit more, slightly bit higher on there. Um, if we change the clocks even higher. So if we take this up to say 1700 for argument's sake, and then do recalculate or calculate rather. Again, we're jumping up and the wattage is getting higher. So if you are going to be thinking of overclocking your graphics card, that is going to have quite a lot of bearing on what power supply you need. And really, graphics cards are probably the ones which are going to give you some of the bigger uh, differences. So let's take the power, let's take the processor up to uh, 4150, which is unlikely, but potentially you could do that. And we'll click on calculate again. And that's added a little bit more. So it's not hugely different on the processor, but certainly the GPU is going to have... Uh, quite a big effect. So let's take it up to as much as we can possibly go and calculate. And we're getting closer to 500 watts now. So that has jumped up quite a lot. And also obviously our amperage has gone up as well. So these are the things to take into consideration when you're purchasing the power supply. Do you have enough voltage on your 12 volt rails? Is it going to come in within this figure? So although it says we want a 470 watt power supply, bearing in mind that power supplies are 80 plus rated. So essentially kind of 80 to 90% to a slightly higher actual efficiency. So really you could take off like 10% or add 10% onto that to give you a better figure. Obviously rounding it up more, giving you a little bit more headroom. You don't want to be running your power supply right on the ragged end all the time. So in this particular instance with that kind of overclock, I would probably recommend for the system going for something possibly like a 650 watt power supply just to give you that little bit of extra headroom and also taking the power efficiency into consideration. But certainly with a slightly lesser overclock or almost like kind of standard settings, reducing that thing a little bit, we could quite easily 
let's calculate that again. So we're down to 371 now with a 23.6 amps on the 12 volt rail. So we could probably put a 500 watt power supply in there and not really suffer any consequences from that. It would be a little bit on the edge under some of the higher loads, but depending on how long your game in and what games you're playing and how much load your system's in, you could be totally fine. So essentially I think for my system, I would probably go with just maybe a, a, a relatively good 500 watt power supply, which will give us a little bit of headroom. So anyway, hopefully that is uh, giving you some ideas of how you can actually work out what power supply you need. It isn't a scientific measure as such, but it certainly does give you a pointer in the right direction and will definitely put you in the right ballpark. So there we go, we've got a really good way now of actually working out roughly what kind of limitations we're gonna have on our system as regards to power usage, wattage, and also what is gonna be on our 12 volt rail, which is probably one of the more important things, especially when it comes to maybe overclocking and also overall system stability. So for me personally, this particular machine, which is pretty much as spec on the screen there, I could probably get away with the Cylon 500 watt quite easily. And if it's not gonna be unduly stressed and not gonna be overclocked too much, We've got a few less features in them. We don't have the extra SSD, et cetera. We've only got the single drive. So as a, a system build with not really much potential for upgrades, this will be absolutely fine. But if we're looking at upgrading this and maybe put in a more power hungry graphics processor in there, or perhaps upgrading the processor and things like that, then certainly having some more wattage on tap would be helpful. In which case maybe upping this to a 650 or a 700 watt would be beneficial and also if the power supply has got a higher certificate so either in the gold or platinum range we're going to get more efficiency so that way we don't need to have such high ratings to get the same actual physical output from the plugs so hopefully that's helped some of you guys out there when you're looking for what power supply obviously we are going to be going through the next part of this again which is actually trying to buy the power supply and where to get the best deals and then finally in part three we'll be showing how to actually install the power supply once you've purchased it and how to fit it in your system. So don't forget to give this video a like if you've liked it and don't forget to click on subscribe if you want to see the latest content when it comes available. But in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.